The economy grew at its weakest pace in two years, according to new figures uh, published uh, this week. The U.S. economy expanded by uh, a a rate of 0.5% annualized after a 1.4% fourth quarter advance. That was less than the projected growth of uh, 0.7%, which itself was not impressive. It was the third straight disappointing start uh, to a year we had seen yet. A lot of it had to do with weakness in the global markets and with the fall of oil uh, prices. So this is a big deal uh, slump, uh, the biggest business investment slump in almost seven years. Household purchases climbed the least they had uh, at the slowest rate or the least in, since 2015. Uh, so it is co- uh, of a special concern. Some of these uh, factors are beyond our control. But the fact is when personal consumption does not grow rapidly, that is yet another indication that we are not earning enough as a people, uh, that wealth is too highly concentrated. Uh, Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel prize-winning economist who studies inequality confirmed that this week that lack in an interview that his concern uh, is that lack of demand is hurting us on uh, economically this is evidence of that and lack of demand happens when you don't have the money to pay for the things you need and the things that you want so we're seeing that we are also seeing um uh, a lack of aggressive government action of course we got gridlock um uh, In Washington, D.C., we have Republican takeover of the state legislatures instead of hiring teachers and other people uh, on the state payrolls, which is one great way to put people to work and boost wages. They are instead still on the path of cutting payrolls. So we we do not yet understand that also, by the way, a productivity growth is weak and productivity growth is also how I think we've reached the point where, you know, they've been able to increase profitability, productivity by letting all the money go to the very top. Uh, that's becoming harder and harder to do. It's almost like they've squeezed as much as they can out of the economy. They're going to have to share the wealth a little bit to make it stronger, but there's no sign that we're willing to do it. But it's not as if the House Republicans aren't willing to do something about the economy. We also learned this week that the House Republicans are trying to cut school lunch programs. See, that's what you do when a lot of people are struggling economically, when we have 47 million Americans in poverty, including one-fifth of all the nation's children. What do you do if you're a compassionate and proactive party? You fight to fall, roll back a section, of the school, a section of the school nutrition bill that provides students in high poverty schools with free lunches. If they are successful, according to Think Progress, it would greatly reduce the number of schools eligible for this program. Thanks, Republicans. We really needed that.